Petrus Hallele from Kosovo and Marie Voignier from France. Two artists with extremely different oeuvres at the Biennale. Both of them have lived in Berlin and are very familiar with the city, and both are now part of the project Artists Beyond. Let's take a look at their art and how it became what it is. We visit Marie Voignier in Paris, where she now lives. She's a video artist, and Hearing the Shape of a Drum is the name of her film about the case of Josef Fritzl in Austria. Fritzl is the man who locked his daughter up in a cellar and abused her for 24 years. With her camera, Marie Voignier followed his trial and its reception in the media. I didn't aim to criticize the media. I wanted to watch people at work and find out what we had in common in fabricating images and sound. Marie Voignet's gaze is not voyeuristic. She mingled with the journalists and plumbed the power of the image, including her own. The sound is sometimes offset from the pictures or left out entirely. It was a closed trial, so there were no images and very little information. But journalists still had to file reports and give live interviews. It's that choreography that I observed, journalists interviewing each other. Peter Talalay's work, by contrast, is firmly rooted in his own biography. For the Biennale, he rebuilt the wooden skeleton of the house he grew up in. A spooky shell, chickens are the only living things in it. Serb militiamen destroyed the original home in the Kosovo War. The house stood in Runik, his hometown. He gathered the wood and details for his installation there with his family, for they are part of his artistic work. His subject is his own life. It's really delicate because uh, I really don't know where other borders between um, what about their house, its art piece, and what is the real. Petrit Halilei was 13 years old when the Kosovo War began. He fled with his family to Albania. His talent for drawing was discovered in a refugee camp there. Art was a way to deal with the trauma. It was the moment when my father was in a prison, like a war prisoner. It was the first period I could communicate with my, my drawings outside of my family. Halilei later studied in Italy and lived in Germany. Now, like many other refugees, he has returned to Kosovo, even though there is little money for artists available there. I had a chance also to really, again, uh, not be like a visitor of, of two weeks, but uh, have time to live a normal everyday life again. And this was really important for me to understand more, actually, what was the new reality here. After living abroad for years, Marie Vonnier now lives in her home country again, in the pulsing art scene of Paris and its powerful network of artists. This is the studio I share with another artist. My office overlooks the Gare du Nord. There's an unobstructed view. That's rare in Paris. But the trains are very noisy. So I often wear headphones when I'm editing. My colleague, a painter, is just moving in. I'm lucky to have a studio in Paris. Many artists who need more space because they work on a large scale have to work in the suburbs, where there are still some affordable large spaces. The 36-year-old video artist often gets her ideas from newspaper reports, like for her current film. Marie Voignier dissects the media frenzy over the sex monster, Josef Fritzl, without defaming anyone. 
L'absurde m'intéresse, mais disons se moquer. Enfin, I'm interested in the absurd. Absurde. But the absurd and the ridiculous are two different things. Situations are absurd, but people individually aren't ridiculous. Les gens euh, individuellement ne sont pas euh, ridicules. C'est les c'est les situations qui le sont. Donc. Two artists, two different backgrounds. Petri Talalay draws on his own biography. Marie Voignier reflects the world around her. Both want their art to provoke and not merely to please. And both can now be seen at the Berlin Biennale.